Um, we always look good. Okay, check your third lips. <laughs> What's up, Twinkle Twinkles? Welcome to another video of our gay movie review, and my name is Walden. And my name is Andrew. And I'm from China. And I'm not. And uh, today we're going to talk about a film called Soundless Wind Chime. Soundless Wind Chime. Yes. I'm personally speaking, I'm very excited about this episode because I'm a big fan of that movie. I really like that movie. Meaning that you have to watch it. And you had, so you had seen it before we watched yeah, it together, right? Yeah, I've seen it before. So this movie was produced back in 2009. After it's being published, I immediately watched it and um, I was so young, I couldn't understand anything the movie was talking about. And we watched it a couple of days ago and I was like, oh, this is actually not hard to understand. So I realized that I was stupid back then. I do, I feel like that with movies about love sometimes. Like, sometimes when, when I was young, I used to hate movies about love stories in general. And then yeah. now that I'm older and like more experienced, I, I feel like I can understand and relate to it more. And rewatching that movie really makes me feel emotional and relatable. And I really love that movie. Yeah, um, so the plot of this movie, uh, one thing that sticks out about this movie is that this was one of the few Chinese gay films that we found that is about an interracial and intercultural couple. Because it takes place in Hong Kong, and yeah. it's about a guy who... So he's, he's from mainland China, and he's living in Hong Kong, and he's kind of closeted, and he's like working in a restaurant, I think. And then he meets this guy from Switzerland who is living in Hong Kong, but he doesn't really have any direction in his life. He's like a, a petty thief a or thief, something. Yeah, yeah he's, I think they meet because he tries to steal a guy's wallet, doesn't yes, he? Yes, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it was love. Yeah, everybody can relate to that. Right, that was how, I mean, that's how all my relationships started. Was, yeah, that's you know, how everybody's relationships I, started. Usually right? I like to pick guys out of a police lineup is how I usually meet the guys that I date. Yes, yes. Um, that part is really, really relatable. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Just ignore that part, that's bullshit. <laughs> so, so anyway, so yeah, so then they end up having this relationship and and then uh, without giving away the ending, um, this is another one that's sad. Like there's so many of them that are set, have sad yes, endings, yeah. which is kind of a bummer, but you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I think this movie is worth watching um, because of the, the their relationship being kind of unique in gay Chinese films. And it's a major part of the plot. Like, a lot of the story deals with the unique challenges that their relationship faces because one of them is not Chinese, but he's living in China. And also, another thing about this movie is like their relationship is really pure. Well, after watching this movie, you feel like Love is not about sex, love is not about gender, love is not about religion, your culture, love is pure love. It's just like, it's really a love story. Because when a lot of people are in a relationship, when they start walking to a relationship, they think like, oh, this person is from another country, oh, this person has a different religion, oh, this person has a different sex gender, am I able to accept that? <laughs> But yeah. this movie actually downplays that part, it's like their relationship is pure, like, they didn't put too much effort in explaining like, oh, like, you speak a different language, you come from a different background though, so there might be barriers in our relationship. But this movie doesn't talk about that at all. And you, you also believe in their relationship, even yeah. though like, they come from different backgrounds and that part is not being addressed, but you still believe their relationship and you really envy, you're envious of their relationship. We talked, when we reviewed Lan Yu, we talked about how the relationship was believable. And I felt like this one is too, because there's especially some scenes where they're just like doing very intimate things, not sexual things, but just like having fun at home together. And it felt very real. Like that kind I like seeing that kind of thing. Yes. Um, and also their relationship, one, one similar thing between this movie and Lan Yu is that their relationship developed really fast. <laughs> From criminal activity. Criminal activity and then immediately fall in love with each so other. So apparently, here's how if you want to fall in love, any all you single people that might be watching this, especially if you want to fall in love in China, this is how you do it. Step one, <laughs> you find a criminal. Yes. Also another very interesting is like, um, you also see sort of like a background of immigration, like immigrants going to different countries because Hong Kong is such a special place. It was like British colony. 
and then it was returned back to China in 1997 and they still hold their original system. So like people going to Hong Kong can have very different immigrant experiences. For example, that guy from Beijing, he works in the Hong Kong restaurant and being a Chinese working in a Chinese restaurant in a place that is not mainland China, well, that's such a typical type of occupation for a lot of Chinese immigrants in America as well. Like for a lot of like, if you do not have a lot of expertise, that's probably the type of job you're gonna end up doing. And then the Swiss guy, a we the Westerner going to Hong Kong, the job that he found like, he was a thief to begin with, and later he found a new job nice to work. be an English teacher in a kindergarten. And that is a very typical job for any person who doesn't speak Chinese. And if you want to get a job in China immediately, that's probably going to be the most probable job that you're going to find in China. So it's like these two people, even though they both are in China, they're having very different immigrant experiences, but their experiences are very typical of um, Chinese people living in the West world and Western people living in a Chinese world. So yeah. you make a good point though. Yeah. And so we kind of, um, usually we, when we talk about like, what's the Chinese cultural value of the movie, but I think you just went into that really, yes. that yeah. that's, it, it expresses like a, a, a realistic experience that you don't necessarily see in a lot of movies. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the, the value of it. Yeah. Um, what do we... And both of them actually do not like the, their jobs. Yeah. Yeah, the guy who was working in the Chinese restaurant, he actually, he doesn't like his job. And uh, the Swiss guy who was working in the kindergarten, he also doesn't like that job. So it's like, but uh, like the Swiss guy actually showed up pretty obviously that he hated that job, but the Chinese guy didn't. So I think that's, that also shows part of the Chinese culture. It's like a different, like people from different backgrounds, how do they deal with like unhappiness and yeah, yeah everything. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. um, so what do we rate this movie for um, storytelling and writing? 10! <laughs> wow! No, I guess 9.5, because wow. I really love that movie, but at the same time, I believe that the story plot definitely has something that is a little bit too ridiculous. So. But I just love this movie so much, so I don't want to give it like a 7, so I, I give it a 9.5. Okay, I'm gonna give it an 8 because I'm still sick of these sad endings, so I, it's it's good. And and it is a little, as you said, it gets, it gets a little like sort of unbelievable. There is a but... different explanation of the ending, actually. There is a different explanation. And if you use a different explanation, that movie is actually not a sad ending movie. Oh, okay, I I, I need to watch the like the behind the you but, know behind but the in scenes. In the end, in the end, sort of like there is a couple. Like I'm not gonna give away the detail, but there is a couple. They okay. end up together. So it's really their story they and not the original two guys' story. Well, I'm not gonna give that away. You have to watch it, but <laughs> I don't know. this movie got layers. You will understand. Yeah, this movie got some some yeah. layers like a damn onion. Yeah, it just depends on like what type of person you are. If you're a really optimistic person, you can actually uh, explain the whole movie into an optimistic movie. But if you're a pessimistic person like him, then it's a tragedy. It's a it's a sad story. But I'm the one that never wants to watch sad stories. Oh, are you? <laughs> Anyway. All right, moving on. <laughs> he doesn't listen to me. Yes. Um, <laughs> help me. Um, so, uh, what about for the uh, what about for the like cinematography, like the way that the movie is this made? This is such a good movie. I think it's just like a fairy tale. I think so. I, I give it a nine point five as well. Wow. Yeah. High marks. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I give it an eight or a nine. I'll say yes. nine. Yeah. Because sure. this this movie is that director's first movie. Yeah. Oh really? This I is didn't his know first that. movie. And this is a is this a Hong Kong director? Yeah, Hong Kong director. And uh, I I think I read it somewhere that this movie was uh, basically a retelling of his own experience. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. He dated a Swiss guy, and they been together for nine years, and then they end up breaking up with each other, and then they see their parents die. Like they experience both parents' death. Well, and that doesn't even give away the ending. Yeah, it's it's very <laughs> it's very interesting because um, I'm not sure whether interesting is the right word, but um, what was I trying to say again? I forgot. 
Oh my god, I forgot, completely forgot. I was trying to make a good point, but I completely forgot what I was trying to say. I'll have a new co-host next time. <laughs> um, he's being, he's auditioning right now. My English is not very good looking. He's, yeah, he's, as you can see, I'm not from America. I'm not a native speaker. Join so us anyway. next time for Andrew Reviews Andrew's Chinese Movies. Bitch. So, <laughs> this movie, I was trying to, the point that I was trying to make is that this was that, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, this was that guy's first movie like the director's first movie but that director really didn't become famous you really do not know his other movies and for the other guy for the main actors it's the same thing for the uh, the that swiss actor after this movie i think he quit acting or somehow i don't see him in other movies at yeah. least not in big movies you don't see him any anywhere I, and yeah. I, I i try to do a google search about him and he he was born in venezuela and he went back to Switzerland. I guess it's Venezuelan Swiss. <laughs> you know his whole life story. <laughs> and then he went back. He did some, yeah. stalk, some serious stalking. I of followed this guy. him. Yeah, I followed him on Instagram, and he posted uh, a post like a few days ago. And uh, he, so he lives in Switzerland right now. And I don't think he he's an actor anymore. Yeah, he quit acting. What about the Chinese actor? Oh, he's still in the acting world. Yeah, he's still he's still pretty active in the acting world, but he never made it to the top like if you talk about that actor with uh chinese people some chinese people might know him but a lot majority of the people might not know him and another thing about that chinese actor is that this movie like it's not one of his famous movies like his most famous movie is actually his very first movie which is called peacock and for anybody out there who's very interested in Chinese movies and who's very interested in Chinese value movies, that's a very, very good movie to see. Highly recommend. Peacock. Huh. Peacock. Yeah, it's a very, very good movie. That's is, that guy's first movie. Is that a, does that one have gay themes? Not at all. Not at all. It's just a it's just a movie <laughs> that yeah, it's just a movie that represents um a special period of China and how people in the Chinese villages, how their lives are like that's cool. yeah yeah um so oh yeah our other rating what about the attractiveness of the of the guys uh i'm not a big fan of that chinese actor actually please don't curse me but the <laughs> well, other one. i do think he is cute but he's not he's just not my type and the other one the other one the other one oh <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he was my crush <laughs> when I was watching that movie, but he definitely <laughs> changed his appearance oh, a little since bit. Since you've like stalked his entire life since then, you know his social security number and everything. Yeah, um, <laughs> he's not as good looking as he used to be. Yeah, um, I thought they were both cute. Now I'm having trouble picturing the Chinese guy in my head. <laughs> I guess he was not as memorable looking. <laughs> For sure. But you thought he was cute. Yeah, they're both, they're both, they're both attractive. Yeah. In yeah. So yeah. In we... terms of Chinese culture, like there is a couple of scenes that are definitely worth mentioning in terms of Chinese culture stuff. For example, like this part when when this Swiss guy was applying for that job, that kindergarten job, and <laughs> there were three Chinese ladies like sitting there. I and know, Chinese the ladies are like, about. yeah, Chinese ladies are like, oh, just hire him. It really doesn't matter. I mean, as long as the Chinese people see a foreigner's face, they will believe that they speak English and they will pay. That's such a Chinese thing. Lao 打開本劇頭,大把的年假勞工啦。咁你知唔知好啦好啦好啦好啦,唔好嘈啦。請佢都冇壞啊。一於叫佢星期一。That's such it, it is true. Yeah. Like, it is so easy for like for for western I mean I mean right now it's not as easy as it used to be because there's so many criticisms against that. Like it used to be for example 10 years ago if you have a white face you're in China and even though you don't speak perfect English there will be institutions who will hire you because parents will just pay for you for that Westerner's face. It's really ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, also like the places Hong Kong, so for both of them, it's like an overseas. 
Yeah, it's both kind of seasons. foreign yeah, for both of little, them. Yeah, it's kind of foreign for both of them. It's like yeah. for the Chinese person, it's like a Western world, but for that Swiss person, it's like a Chinese world. So it's like very interesting.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's and、uh, another film that we want to review、um, is Wedding Banquet, which is like the only other、uh, gay film that we found that's about a relationship between a Westerner and a Chinese. And it's that one would be. It's interesting, I think, to consider those two side by side because Wedding Banquet is set in America. Yeah. And, yeah, and that one has more Chinese cultures, and we're definitely going to review that. Yes. And another thing, I really want to.、Oh, there's so many things. I have so many things to talk about、wow. this movie. I love this movie so much. I think there are two parts of this movie that definitely stand out. One part is、uh, that old lady when、uh, when she ordered delivery from the main actor. Oh yeah, she, she was like、TV. a dancer. Yeah, she was like a dancer. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. And then、uh, the director actually showed her dance performance. So I think. What the director is trying to say is that everybody has their youth, and what the two actors are experiencing is their youth. And that old grandma actually also has her youth. She was such an amazing dancer, but look at her now. She's like alone and has nobody, and she's about to die. So yeah, that's very sad. That's one thing that I really want to bring out. And that building looks so Chinese. It's just like. Makes me miss my hometown a little bit because it makes me think of my grandparents. Because、uh, well, my all of my grandparents have already died, and yeah, it's 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 a little bit sad for me to watch that because like every old people actually used to be young and they used to have a lot of dreams. And another part that I want to bring about is the last part when that little girl singing that Chinese song that、yeah. brings the whole movie to another artistic level. Like that, that song was such a beautiful Chinese song. What's the meaning of the title? I oh yeah, I totally forgot what the yeah, meaning of the title is. Yeah, that's also another thing about the Chinese culture. It's not a very popular Chinese culture. Parts of China believe that. So if you put a wind chime on your door and you hear the sound of the wind chime, probably somebody who is already dead. They want to see you for the last time. And also in the movie, it mentioned、um, another Chinese culture. Which it's about like once a person dies after seven days, that person will become another type of creature and come back to check up on you one last time and get ready for their next lives. You know, when people die, their soul will attach to an animal and come back after seven days of their death. Like a bird or a moth. Why? To say last goodbye and、uh, prepare for their new life. Getting this far. That's what Chinese people because like, it's such a. Oh, I guess ooh, then I guess it's a very Chinese bird thing. Bird goes. Yeah,、work. I guess it's a very Chinese thing because we believe that people's souls will come back after seven days of their death, and they're gonna check up on people they love for one last time. That is why sometimes you're gonna dream about the people who have died after seven days. That's what we believe.、Huh. Yeah. Wow, this movie brings up a lot of very deep and sad. Subject matter. Yes. So yes,、yeah, so、this one we we definitely recommend. But it's definitely not that hard to understand. I mean, it、yeah. was a little bit hard for me to understand because I really don't have a lot of love experience. <laughs> didn't, didn't. So still don't. Jo- <laughs> Join us next time for another Chinese gay movie review. And don't forget to click on that subscribe button. Hit like, comment below if you want to watch that movie for free. I'll go. I'm gonna send it to you, and see you next time. Mwah.